Well, we have a very important vote coming up. It's on the supplemental. It's an outrageous bill because they call it all emergency funding. It's up to $187 billion. They're doing it off budget in order to avoid all the budgetary rules. Uh, several months ago, the president asked for $107 billion to continue the war in the Middle East. It ended up, instead of it being cut back like the Democrats were supposed to do, they added so much more. Now the spending for the war is up to $161 billion, and they've added $25 billion more for domestic welfare spending. So everybody was going to, not everybody, but a lot of people are going to vote for it because they put in the goodies. They put in money for the flood, and they put money in for the veterans, and uh, they took out the controversial thing about telling the president about winding the war down and bringing the troops home, that was removed. So now the two parties have gotten together and they have compromised by raising both the military spending and also the spending for domestic welfare. This, uh, this whole idea that uh, this spending will go on forever and ever, but can you imagine, just think about it, the President asked for $107 billion for uh, the war and the Democrats add $40 billion more. So this, this process really just can't continue because it's going to bankrupt our country. Foreign policy doesn't change. Instead of cutting in both areas, taking care of our veterans, and taking care of some of our problems here at home, what we do is we continue to spend like it, it'll never end, but it will end. And it is connected to the fact that our gasoline prices are high. Gasoline prices are high because our dollar goes down in value. Why do we have dollars going down in value? We fight these wars that are endless, and we end up printing the money for it and devaluing the dollar. At the same time, the disruption of these wars in the Middle East causes a fear factor to be put into it, a risk is, is involved, and the whole threat that we might invade Iran makes it so that, these, uh, that, that the price of oil will continue to go up. So we're on a foolhardy course, and unfortunately, and uh, very discouragingly, uh, the Congress isn't doing anything but making this much worse by spending uh, all this money that they don't have. Tragically, it's a, it's a mess. I am sure, I will assure you, that I will be voting no. Uh, yes, you know, uh, a month or so ago we had a vote on this bill and it was actually divided into three parts. The military money, also the restrictions on the presidents and troop movements and insisting you bring the, some of the troops home at a certain date, and also the, the most the best domestic spending. Today's vote will occur with the military spending being separate and the domestic spending being separate. But uh, they haven't worked out politically that it's going to be very hard to vote against the domestic spending because you have to vote against flood victims and also some veteran benefits. At the same time, the people who are for the war, and unfortunately it's the majority of Republicans and Democrats, will vote for the military spending. So the Republicans are happy because they're getting all the military money, and the Democrats are happy because they're getting this uh, opportunity to have this additional uh, spending on domestic funding. So it's just the way Washington works. Instead of doing the right things, they get together and everybody gets what they want totally irresponsible because they just don't have the money there. The taxes won't go up, fortunately, but they'll borrow more money and they're going to send the bills to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is just going to print this money and the process goes on. It's going to go on until we have a financial crisis and a dollar crisis. And unfortunately, I'm afraid that time is approaching rather quickly.